Okay, well, uh, I'm very pleased that we've got uh, four young people uh, to come and have a little bit of a chat about the election that's coming up. I'm Charles Warringham and I'm uh, an independent candidate running for the seat of Ryan. And we've got four young people because one really interesting issue this year is how young people are engaged or not engaged with the election. I want to just kick things off by asking, and by the way, we've got Sandy and uh, Mandy, Cassie and Nick, all students uh, at the local universities. I'd like to start out just by asking you for any views you have about why you think it is that well, apparently 20% of young people are not even enrolled and many of those who are enrolled seem to be not really very closely engaged with the election. So just any thoughts from your angle? Probably just say it's a lack of knowledge as much as anything else. They don't, they've got other concerns on their mind that press more heavily and they don't really know that much about it so I'll deal with it later. And I think a lot of young people don't know very much about um, the candidates who are running and so when they rock up on voting day they just sort of pick a name, they don't really have any preference for, they don't really know the opinions of the different candidates and so they just yeah, pick a name without really understanding the um, policies and things behind the people who are running. I think maybe also too for at least young, some young people that it's um, some, an amount of cynicism, so not believing that their vote's going to actually change anything mm. or that it, the outcome's already decided before they get to the voting. Any special reasons why you think they might might feel that way, or uh... I think it's uh, it's also got a bit to do with education. That I don't feel personally that politics and government um, and the way the government works in Australia is actually very well covered in school. And certainly, from my perspective and where I grew up in school, we really didn't cover a lot of um, government and how it, how it runs in Australia, and therefore. When I came out of school, I really didn't know anything about it and therefore didn't really understand the implications of what my vote would mean and therefore ticked boxes willy-nilly. As you've been um, been studying at the local universities and learning more about your own disciplines and many other issues, have your views changed about the importance of politics at all and the importance of elections? Certainly, yeah. They've changed significantly in the past couple of years, but it has only just made me realise how ignorant and naive I was when I was 18 and I enrolled to vote. I only enrolled to vote because my parents made me do it and I, I knew nothing about politics. I had no idea who I was voting for, what they stood for and it was only really in the last couple of years that I've come to realise how important it is and it really bothers me the attitudes of younger enrolled um, young people now. So what do you think, what do you think some of the problems are? What, why are there, there these obstacles towards younger people getting involved, do you suppose? What, what's wrong with the system? What could we do better to get people more engaged? Or put it another way, what's, what's turning people off? A lot of all the election stuff is all targeted towards an older audience. And if you've got nothing targeted at you, then you just go, oh, well, I'm, it's not that important. It's, you know, I must be the minority and it's not really going to matter what I do. Yeah. Well, it's often seen as a, it's the old people's thing to decide and um, I don't think that any of the election campaigns really speak young people's languages. Mm. Mm. What about Mr Garrett? You've got a, uh, a well-known person who might have some more appeal to younger people. I think he's probably one of the only um, well-recognised political candidates in the young, like, amongst young people. And that's simply because he has more appeal and more in common with younger people. And you've got a lot of politicians um, trying to get out there on media like YouTube and so on. Is that, do you think that's making any difference or is that just... Uh, what do people you talk to, what do they think about that? I don't think everyone takes it seriously, but I think even if you, you just go to the website out of interest and you're not looking for kind of a political answer that, you still learn things that you wouldn't otherwise. So I think just having it out there, that they'll probably get, people get a lot more from it than they actually think. And I suppose uh, really important, the issues this year. What are the things that, that you and your friends, when you do talk about it, uh, what sort of comes up at the top of the list when, when you do discuss the issues that we should be voting for, even if people aren't taking it as seriously as they might in your age group? Um, I guess the issues that come up most be the things that affect you. So people at uni, the things like um, your hex debts, um, textbooks, those kind of costs, and um, Centrelink and those issues that go along with that, how you get your payments organised and what you've got to do to be considered independent. Um, it can be quite hard to, to get 
through that process at times. So I guess they would be pretty high on people's priorities. A lot of people don't don't have that priority, so they just I don't know. We'll figure it out later when we get to the election booth. It's pretty important in, in this particular area in Ryan because whereas in the country as a whole, one person in 27 is a student, in Ryan it's one person in eight. Mm. It's a very uh, uh, population of, um, that contains a lot of university students. So these are interesting issues. But it was intriguing that at the Higher Education Candidates Forum that was held at the University of Queensland, there was very um, low student attendance. Had you heard of that at all? Did you know what was no, going no. on? No. So that was one thing that was not well publicised, even though it was right on your doorstep. I think partly perhaps because it was aimed, or at least uh, organised by a staff group, the National Tertiary Education Union. So they should have had flyers out all over the campus. Yeah. Yeah. What if, hear anything about it. One of the other th things for me that is important coming up to this election is health. So working or beginning to work in the health industry, health funding and, and where that goes is also something that, as well as education, would be the two main things that I'd look for. So what would you like to see new or different or what do you think this country needs to do in the health area? Um, well I think certainly um, the problem with indigenous and rural health hasn't been solved and so um, I'd like to see kind of further that better um, looked at um, and then also health funding where that goes um, looking at more medical school places. That certainly seems to be a very significant problem with getting enough doctors trained and as you know we've had to rely considerably on overseas trained doctors who in turn need supervision and so on. So that does seem to be a, a big issue. Um, any ideas about how it could be solved? More university places? Anything yeah, else? Any other way. schemes? Or? More support in training of young doctors. I know that um, there are some excellent teaching schools um, and like practical placements but I think there needs to be a lot more support and a lot more um, funding placed in that area to support um, young people in those places and also in rural areas as well. I think there needs to be a lot more support for rural doctors. Like my hometown in North Queensland um, has one doctor who has now just left because they can't handle working 16 hour days and Queensland Health didn't do anything about it. Um, so I think there needs to be just a lot more support, a lot more funding so that people can do what they're trained to do. Yeah, so it's not only at the uh, initial getting medical places but it's also keeping the doctors and making rural placements look attractive to people mm. who have just graduated. Okay. That's a big challenge and uh, the, the parties obviously are trying to respond to that in different ways and uh, what do you think of their policies? Any thoughts as to what you've seen or read about in terms of the policies the parties are putting up? One big thing that I take issue with is that there is no clear information out there for young people on what the party's policies are on these things. I'm sure that they're written down somewhere, but they're not easily accessible for young people and they're not, they're not written in a way that we understand. And we can't clearly um, look at them and go, okay, this is what this party supports and this is what this party is going to do, therefore I can make an educated judgement. I can't make an educated judgement at the moment. So if you wanted to find out about the stance of the various candidates and parties, where would you go right now? What would you actually do to try to find out? The first thing I would look at is probably the internet, just because it lets me make up my mind about different things. Because I find if I talk to people, you only get a one-sided opinion. And I really don't trust a lot of people now because you know that their views are so one-sided. Um, so that's probably the first place I would look. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, when people go to vote, you know, this, the election has become very much focused on the leaders and personalities in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd think that the only names on the ballot paper would be uh, Mr. Rudd and Mr. Howard and, and one or two others. Uh, but of course, that's not the case in most constituencies. So, how do you find out about the people you actually get to vote for? Do you have you um, had the opportunity to do that at all? Do you feel like you know anything about the like local candidates who would actually be on your ballot paper? Not really. Just unis keeps you really busy at this time of year so you just go put it in that pile of I'll get to it later and yeah. suddenly it's election day you go hmm I really should have got to this earlier. So when's, when's your final exam? Nick? Uh, next Wednesday. So that'll give you about 10 days to do your <laughs> swatting for the election. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is really difficult for young people to find out the information, especially about local candidates. I think it's a bit easier to find out about the bigger parties, but about the local candidates, unless there's been something put in your letterbox explaining their views and that sort of thing, it gets really difficult and I think a lot of um, young people just really don't think about it. And um, I think um, a lot of people our age as well will vote on their parents' opinion and it'll be either Labour or Liberal, depending on what their parents did when they were growing up. And 
like whether their parents, if they were um, working class, then they're probably going to vote Labor, and then if their parents were, um, you know, in business or that sort of thing, then they're probably more inclined to vote Liberal. And I think a lot of people at our age, when they're just a couple years out of school, they haven't really formed their own opinions yet, and they don't really know that much about the local candidates, and they will just vote on something that they might have heard their parents say when they were growing up.